Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Uncanny Trip Around the Multiverse with your hosts, the man from the future but is linked to the past because we've done so much stuff that's messed up my future so it doesn't exist, <laughs> Kyle Charles and uh, the newborn saviour of mutant kind, C.Y. Chong. And in this episode we are gonna, as you can tell by the theme of our extremely long, well my long-winded <laughs> intro, we're going to be talking about my favourite comic book characters, franchise, team, whatever. The X-Men and an X-Men eccentric story that yep. got me back into comic books. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Messiah Complex, X-Men <laughs> Messiah Complex is what we're going to be speaking about. Um, though, this is more of a... Okay, so, Messiah Complex itself... It runs alongside Messiah War and Second Coming as a trilogy, right? Well, yeah. But <laughs> it, there's all sorts of storylines that run before, during, and inclusive to this. And so it kind of start, yeah, it yeah. starts with House of M. Uh, there's X Men Schism in the path, this decimation till all the way to uh, Avengers versus X Men. So it actually quite a, bit, so yeah. quite a big storyline. Quite a big. Yeah. And you can even go far to say it's sort of still, <laughs> it's, it's kind of connected to what's going on now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So this storyline was in 2008, right? S- yeah, 2007 to 2008, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I haven't been reading X-Men, so I may have a couple of comments to make. Maybe you, you can you can fill in me in certain bits. Yeah. Um, as far as the storyline goes, though, uh, new for reader-friendly... It's good that they, because it runs through four times. Good that the authors kind of kept their current storylines held back a little bit. Yeah. Um, to make this event as smooth as possible, because it just was basically self-contained, running through different art styles and different writers. Yeah. Um, did you ever read the excuse the the nineteen ninety three event? I think. Yeah. Where- I read it about a year or two ago. And yeah, no, yeah. that that was a mm. storyline which ran through most of the titles, X Men titles at the time, which yeah. sometimes didn't have much relevance to the actual storyline. Like you know, yeah. they had their own ongoing storylines in the middle of this storyline as well. So it kind of, yeah. so here they kind of they they were like, you know, this is the storyline that's going to be running through it. Let's let's just concentrate on this. Yeah, it's, it's a good decision. Yeah. It, um, I'm glad they sort of do that more with comics nowadays rather than yeah. you jump in like, oh, I have no idea what is actually going on. Yeah. And the story is kind of is pretty straightforward. House of End decimation happened, right? Yep. Uh, so no more mutants. Their population is reduced to, what, 200? Yeah. And always okay. shrinking. <laughs> yeah. And this is the first mutant-born child uh, in this current, in, the, in that era. Yeah. After the decimation, and yeah, essentially, is you have several sides getting the child for their own specific reasons. Um, I'll just go through them quickly. But you got the purifiers, yep, which are William the Stryker. human, yeah, yeah, he's uh, religious. Group well, it, there's, there's, yeah, then they nuts that just want to kill mutants, right? Yeah, so they want to get rid of this. They want to get rid of this child. You got Sinister and his Moraders, who you think Sinister, Mr. Sinister, wants to do some experimentation to the kid because that's what he does, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's a little bit more. Uh, X Men obviously want to keep the kid alive. Bishop and Cable have their own agendas as well. Yeah. So like, yeah, and uh, this is this is being. It's, I don't know exactly. Mutant uh, Predator X is what it's called, right? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what I thought originally. You can correct me afterwards. Oh. It seemed to me, when we were running through this storyline, Predator mm. X was just kind of like a, a survival of the fittest sort of... Um, I don't say like an animalistic being. Mm. But, you know, essentially a predator just like going to kill the mutants, going to fight the mutants if they survive the survive, and if they die, well, they won't, they won't, they won't be living in any way. But that's what, like, it's like a lion, you know, feasting on yeah. whatever animals there are. Not like um, Apocalypse, who's, who's survival of the fittest with an actual mind of itself. <laughs> yeah. Um, am I correct or incorrect in my assumption? Uh, you're slightly correct. 
Because what okay. it is, it was the people who made um, X-23. Yeah. They made that to hunt down mutants just in case, you know. Oh, all right. So yeah. it, it, it basically is just uh, hunts down and kill them with yeah. no actual... I want to say thought process, but it don't have a long game. It's just no. like, I'm going to just kill mutants. Because yeah. that's what I've been created to do. All right. Yeah, because they created one before and she beat it and this one escaped from the facility and that's why it's doing its tour across the world and new york i mean across america to (laughs) eat things yeah yeah uh but no it's 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 good to have all these running storyline like different people going after the same thing i know the kid that ends up being like oh mcguffin or whatever right but it's just okay now you've got everyone with a different agenda how are they gonna work out not their differences necessarily, but how what's the what's the book going to come to the conclusion? Wise, now why wasn't um, Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants? Well, the Brotherhood of Mutants uh, involved in this was he uh, just his storyline? Was there something else going on on the side? I'm pretty sure at this point Magneto was still depowered off the M Day. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, um, all right, and, and the basically probably were gone. most of the. Brotherhood of Evil Mutants joined the Marauders. Oh, okay. Yeah, like. All right, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Okay, and uh, and the the Horsemen uh, Apocalypse and the Horsemen because it would have been. Let's just say if they had all this, all these guys in it. Now that'd have been something. Um, but I can understand probably why you know um, Apocalypse what was what happened to him at this point. Uh, why wouldn't he point. go up? Okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. So, all right, that's all. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Do you want to just quickly go over the story for the people and then we'll go into a little bit more specifics? Yep. Yeah. Alright, so um, it starts with... Basis, story starts with um, this town called Cooper Town. Ironic. Um, is getting... It's basically getting burnt down and you find out that the Marauders and... The purifiers went there to get the baby. Yeah. And the X Men get there too late, so they just find a burnt out city and they're like, oh, humans are still, like, adults are still alive, but what happened to the kids? So then you basically find out that the purifiers went there to kill children because they heard a child is the first mutant born after M Day. And. They're like, oh no, we need to go and find this baby. But they can't track the baby because they burn everything and it's messed up Wolverine's senses. So yeah. that's not a thing. And strangely enough, I think this is this is all we see of the purifier, purifiers. That they, they, they don't really have anything else to do with the story, is it? Yeah, they do. Oh, uh, come back. Say again. They, 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 uh, okay, maybe I sk- uh, maybe I read it too quickly. I thought they, uh, they just, uh, like, here, um, and they don't really come back, but, okay. Yeah, the whole Richter stuff's to do the purifiers. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the X-Men find the dead bodies of two of, um, Sinister's marauders, so, like, oh, it's Sinister, he must have the baby. So they go off to go and find the baby, but then you see the thing known as Predator X. So yeah, that's first issue basically in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah I can't go panel. I can't go panel by panel because that's just no, 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 no. Yeah, there's a give a rough overview. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So that's part one, and that was in the issue was called. It was a basically Messiah Complex one shot. So it's the start of yeah. the whole event, as we should say. Then move on to chapter two, which is from Uncanny X Men four nine two, and this is where it starts with Cyclops sending Wolverine, Angel, Colossus, and Nightcrawler to look for to hunt down some of um, Magneto's old acolytes, and they find a few of them, and they tell them basically uh, Exodus is part of the Marauders now. So like, okay, cool. And then we have another little side story going on that Xavier is kind of pissed off with Cyclops 
because he didn't tell him what's going on. And Cyclops is like, dude, I don't need to tell you anything because, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, all right. No, remember a while back we had a discussion. Yeah. Now, to so X-Men Schism, why, why, why did they make Cyclops into the um, hard-headed, stubborn character who just be like, you know, survive at all costs, mutant kind needs to survive? And then they try to tame Wolverine to be like, look, man, we can work with the humans. You don't, we don't need to be like Xavier Magneto. We, we, we can work things out, right? Um, and I uh, here I can see from this story then how they were tweaking Cyclops in the direction of, um, yeah, new to kind all costs. We've got to be, we've got to be like um, militaristic about this, man. We've got, to, we've got to look at it cold, hard logic. And he's like, he's like, Xavier's trying to talk to him. He's like, Charles, shut your mouth. <laughs> Like, yeah, but something like, did, you know, like this is where like Cyclops is still down for human race. He still wants yeah. humans and mutants to coexist. Yeah, but he also wants his race to survive. So he's not, he never becomes full Magneto like the humans no, no, need but, to die. Like, but this is like um, I'm seeing the transition from here yeah. to obviously where they're going to go because that you know we we had the discussion before. Yeah. So like, okay, I see where they did. They're, they're starting the string to pull along. Yeah. Because in all fit, like, his, in his rights, like, realistically, what he's doing makes sense because after yeah. M-Day, when you've gone from, like, having 6 million mutants into the world to 200. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need to sort of, like, you know, what we, I need to sort of do what I can to help my, my people. people see the next yeah. millennium. You know what I mean? Sort of thing. Yeah. And it's a good way they've done it this way because, like, you know, Charles has always been a weirdo. Charles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, let's put it this way. Charles has always been kind of weird, but yeah. he's always been sneaky and backstabbing and all this stuff. So yeah. all, all, prior to this, I can get why that got kind of like a fed on Charles as yeah. well. Because at this point, Xavier's not a leader of the X-Men anymore because of... Yeah. They all get pissed off with him because of the events of... Something that happened just before this, um, Deadly Genesis, where they find out that he let six X training X Men die, and yeah. he erased everyone else's memory, so no one remembered who they were. And one yeah, of them yeah, was yeah. Cyclops' brother, and Cyclops was like, "Dude, yeah, yeah. I have a third brother." You Cyclops' brother, uh, Vulcan. yeah, Vulcan. Yeah, he's like, "Dude, yeah, yeah, but that that's just one of the that's many one shady of the... things. Yeah, <laughs> the many shady things he's done, like with the all the." 30 years of yeah. X-Men. Like, yeah. But so, that's yeah. not uncommon for the stuff that he has been doing. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how bad it is. It's like, yeah, this is just one of the many bad things and it's not even the worst thing I've done. No, exactly. This is just like, this is probably in the middle of like all the terrible things I've done. <laughs> yeah. And then I tell you, X-Men, my original X-Men, Magneto's the bad guy because he kills. But yeah. I'm all these backstabbing, shady uh, shenanigans. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, what? He's like, like he's higher than thou. Yeah, he's yeah. a douche. So yeah, so Cyclops is like, nah, dude, you can't be coming telling me what to do. You bred me to be the leader, so I'm leading. Get out of my house, yeah. basically. <laughs> and then, okay, yeah, he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't say get out of my house like that, but he does say he does say shut up and know your role. Yeah, basically, like, you stay in the corner. You're here because everyone knows who you are, but. You're a figurehead at this point. You're not nothing. You're just... You're here because I allow you to be yeah, here. That's basically. Like conversation. <laughs> so then Cyclops enlists the services of X-Factor and they're like, oh, hey, Cyclops. You, things must be really bad because, you know, you hate Jamie Maddox and yeah. you're getting him to help us. He's like, yeah. Well. And, and, and you're not really a fan of killing people. Um, yeah. And where the where the Black Ops team essentially of the X Men? Um, no, X Factor isn't. And you need uh, oh, X okay, okay. So this is an um. All right, right. No, okay, okay. I, I'm not just getting mixed up with my X Factor, but there was a team of X Factor that was right. No, X oh, Factor what? originally was when the first iteration of them was when Cyclops, oh, I, the original X Men. Oh uh, no, no, no. I got so, so, okay, I know I'm getting mixed up with. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of X. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I was, I was waiting for you to speak. Oh, 
Yeah, no, you're thinking of X Force. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, that's yeah. right, right. Um, yeah, so because Wolverine was wait, Wolverine is on this team of X Factor, right? No. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting mixed up with my teams too much, man. All right, yeah. no, no, can you continue? Okay. Oh, right. All right. I mean, just I, I try and sort it. Off. Let me see if I can like simplify the teams. Okay, X Factor is a detective agency. Yeah. Ran by Melpole Man slash Maddox. And they do, they handle the sort of weirder stuff of the mutant world. And yeah. X-Force, which we'll talk about later. I mean, they come yeah. up later in this. They're the Black Ops wet team of the X-Men. Now, now let me just pause you for a second and say, this is what happens, by the way. When yeah. you don't follow the series for ages, you start getting mixed up with your teams there. Because yeah. there's loads of X-Men teams, loads of individuals and everything like that. And yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's my fault there. But it's partially because it's not new reader friendly. Kind of, it, it's there's a lot of stuff, a lot of people going on. So yeah. it's, and obviously in the comic though, they can't exactly take time to explain everything and everything no. like that because they assume what you know what's going on during the series. Yeah. Oh, oh you're from. Uh, yeah. So so um, continue. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah Richter and Maddox come and jo- Cyclops is like yeah Richter because you have no powers we need you to join the purifiers get a little inside information what's going on and Maddox I need you to go and see Forge but I'm not going to tell you why it's like okay cool I'll do that and yeah. this is when he takes this girl called Layla Miller who becomes yeah. very important not in this story but in the future as well yeah I was, I was going to say, like, their story kind of, like, happened here and was kind of part of the story, but then clearly there's something else going on later. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say, I do like Layla, Layla Miller's power, her yeah. power of, her mutant power of not being able to be uh, identified as a mutant. I'm like, oh, that's actually, you that's know what, that's a, that's a, yeah, but that's a quite a clever mutant power. I mean, you would have thought a mutant might have that power of the, have a billion mutants there were at some point. It's like okay, that's that's quite intriguing actually. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And but her future with Jamie gets a bit weird. Uh, is that uh, a separate story to this? Yeah, but it's not. It's more in the X Factor stuff. It's weird. Yeah. I'll just yeah. say at the end. So yeah, yeah so yeah. there you go. Um, Beast is also in this, and I hate Beast, and that's what I'm gonna. Okay. But he doesn't really get much to do in this either, does he? No, this is before he becomes the, as I call him, Gene Traitor. That's another thing. I'll go into okay. another <laughs> yeah, another yeah. thing altogether, right? Fair enough. Yeah. And then this is, as you pointed out uh, or, uh, earlier, this issue sort of shows you the beginning of the, the quote-unquote hill turn of Cyclops and the downfall of Professor Yeah, Rex. this is more of the tweener turn, right? Yeah. And the other other sort of more things that go other thing that goes on on this issue is you see more of Professor sorry Predator X getting more t- closer and closer to the X Mansion. Yeah, um, there was one other thing where Beast kind of has a theory that he thinks the the purifiers are working with someone from the future, but then his research shows them. It's not because their guns are not futuristic. That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I think before the purifiers were in league with Bastion, who is a robot from the future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, hey, like I was saying before, there's lots of. It's not really. I mean, (laughs) the the core story is just about them trying to sometimes there's other things and you're like yeah but yeah i, I can explain a lot of backstory to get to this point but yeah forget, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the story later story sort of more explained bastion for other readers so hey yeah and then we get to issue three which is x factor 25 this one starts off with morgan freeman who is actually the leader of the new york section of pacifiers before we go on, it's not actually Morgan Freeman, but the guy is drawn to look like Morgan Freeman. And you probably read the, what he said in Morgan Freeman's yeah, voice. Yeah, like, oh, this race... Is it race? Genism is... It sounds very nice coming from his voice. So, yeah. Um, and the X-Men set up a little ruse to get 
Richter into the classifiers by getting Wolfbane to sneak into one of their ser- sermons. Wolfbane being uh, the werewolf, Scottish werewolf. Yeah, Rain. Uh, female. female. Um, so they get, yeah, they, they give a, uh, what, blood, uh, pell- um, what's the thing from the, the Bloods? like in the Squibs. movies, I forgot. Squibs. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Richter pretends to shoot her, and they're like, hey, you saved her from a mutant. You can join. We're not going to do any background yeah. checks because no. they're dumb <laughs> racists. So, you know, it is. <laughs> you know. So, it is what it is. And then, um, multiple man slash Maddox gets to Forge's compound in Texas, and they have a little talk. Meanwhile, this is all going on. Wolverine is hit by a truck, well, hit by an ambulance so he can get into the hospital to find this woman called Amelia who was a part of Magneto's acolytes but left yeah. because Magneto is dead and she wants to... Now, now yeah, let me just clarify something here, right? Yeah. <clears throat> now, in the movies, Wolverine still feels pain, right? And yeah. I assume he, he can still feel pain in the comics because, you know, back when I was reading the X-Men... He was yeah. still hurt, but, but now I know those healing factors heals and stuff. But come on, to get willingly hit by an ambulance to go to the hospital. I mean, like, dude, you're gonna be in pain for like that. That you know, when the ambulance hits yeah. you, but you're just gonna, oh yeah, I'm just gonna lie down here, just come hit with the not what? Hey, you know, he's he's. I know. I'm just saying. Yana, I mean. feel sometimes writers do it, and they don't. They think, yeah, you can heal from him. Like, yeah, but. If he he's gonna still feel pain, yeah. You know, it's just kind of, so like when he got nuked by victory. the when he, when he, you know he got nuked and was standing still. I don't know, I imagine he was like, yeah, yeah, but years later. Uh, this is that was when because in this period, there's still sort of like he does heal from everything, but it takes him time. He still feels pain, but yeah. now they have gone to like you're saying. Dude gets nuked and two panels later he's fine, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose you could boost him up to the point where he start, where he somehow he gets an expert person or whatever to run him over and go, Yeah, 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 it's alright, I'm gonna But then by the time he gets to the hospital will when he be fully healed. Unless he could control his healing, which makes I don't know. Sense. <laughs> I don't know. We're just gonna say they went around the, the block. Right, like two buildings behind uh, you know, you know, building behind ran him over, then I would have said that, right? Could be. I, I, if, if that's any way that makes sense. Because it was like the other side of like wherever it was. By the time they got there, no. Nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so they find her and get information about where Exodus is. And that's when she tells them that he's joined the Marauders. So they go and find the Marauders. Mm-hmm. Um, then... Maddox has a meeting with Forge and he kind of explains about, yeah, there's ever since M before M day, there was like multiple future paths and stuff. But since M day, there's only two futures right, for right. the mutant race. So and... just clarify for me this, uh, clarify for me this, is the two alternate futures Bishop's future and keep or is it, or the, are these alternate timeline futures? I think they're alternate timeline futures because right. Cable's future doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And Bishop sort of does because he's not that far into the future. Right. But now there's only the future that we see in this. Yeah. Well, at this point, anyway, the future when you see it this, and then the other future that the other Maddox goes to, but we don't see. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I don't okay. know what future that is because I can't remember if they ever touch upon that again. So. Yeah. Cyclops' plan is basically to send two of Manox's clones to the future, to the possible futures, and when they die, he will get the information they need. Yeah. For today. Now somehow, yeah. somehow the Madroxes can uh, what reabsorb. He, uh, I understand, right? When yeah. he separates, as yeah. his private eye, right? So he makes yeah. his multiples, and they walk around, and then after they come back to wherever they're going to come back. And- we reabsorb. Yeah, right. we absorb. But you're telling me magic. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was a bit wacky when I was reading. I was like, what? 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 Yeah, because they can die and everything. But I think yeah. if 
not a thing. I know when they die, he he gains whatever they learned. Yeah, but they, they don't, he doesn't reabsorb them, right? They just because you know when he has his clones and they come to wherever it is, to they all bunk back together. They can reabsorb them. Yeah, but you tell me across time and space, somehow the knowledge just floats back into his head. Uh, um, even if they're in the alternate dimensions, alternate futures, and stuff like that, I and mean, that's what this this that's what this storyline is telling me, anyways. Yeah, so I don't know if that's something they made for that, or does yeah. have something to do with Emma Frost and being the psychic. You know what I mean? It's not really explained, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, uh, it it's just I don't want to say it's the convenience for the current story they're telling, but yeah. it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm not too sure if too much on how his powers work. I don't know if they established this before this or what. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. he did, but I doubt it. <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah, so that's the plan. Um, meanwhile, the new X-Men, which is a comic line off the Mark, Mil- Mark, not Mark Miller, Gary, not Gary, Grant Morrison run. There was a new X-Men. It was the younger X-Men. Yeah. Um, it started off like really kid friendly and happy and stuff and then literally (laughs) after house of m it turns super dark right because like the first issue of that after house of m was when the purifiers blew up a bus of the deep power kids and like 45 of them died so it went really dark after that yeah yeah and so they're annoyed that cyclops hasn't told them what's going on and made them a part of the whole strike teams and stuff then yeah. they sort of find out why cyclops didn't tell them because it's the purifiers and they got beef with the purifiers because they killed their friends so yeah. like, in a turmoil kids gonna be silly later so yeah and it they do um, yeah okay so, so i just want to say this also adds to a, a, a cyclops is Eventual heel turns like now he's keeping secrets and he's being shady, so yeah, but yeah. All, all leaders do that, so it's not, yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, we could, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could yeah. argue that, yeah, as well, yeah. So, but, but I've been saying that they're bringing it more to the forefront as they're writing it now, they're, yeah. they're just saying, oh, you know what, there's, there's there's a little darkness to this guy, yeah, and it has to be, <laughs> he's quite sad, yeah. and then, yeah, so just for the end of the issue. Forge sends the clones to the future, but Layla decides that she's gonna go with Maddox. And yeah, like, she, yeah. She jumps in, and then Maddox is like, "Oh, we'll get her back." And then Forge is like, "Oh yeah, by the way, uh, this is a one-way trip machine. There's no way of getting her back." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh no!" And then passes out because <laughs> his mind's been stretched to two different dimension timelines, so he's messed up. And then issue ends with Richter being initiated into the um, purifiers and finding out that this little basement they go to in New York has like a crap ton of guns. And he's like, oh, wow, you've got lots of firepower. And, and Morgan Freeman's like, no, this is just a small one. We've got like a city full in Washington, D.C. And you're like, oh, no, the pacifiers yeah. are packing heat. Da-da-da-da-da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, bad things are coming. Issue 4 being the new X Men, issue 44. Again, starts off with the new new X Men being really pissy about being left out of the fight. And Xavier, being a dick that he is, comes <laughs> and is like, hey, maybe you should, should go and do something, you know? Because, you know, go off the purifiers. What's the worst that can happen? See, this is why Xavier's a dick. <laughs> like Cyclops is is like yeah don't go you know because it's the purifiers you know I don't want you to die dead but then Professor X sticking his nose in going no yeah, no I think you should talk to them you know because yeah it's the purifiers they're just normal humans with guns yeah not all of you are bulletproof but yeah it is what it is um then we go back to Forge's compound. He's talking to Cyclops, saying, "Yeah, he's worried about Rick, not Richter, sorry, Maddox being in a coma." But Cyclops is like, "Nah, we got more to worry about. The mutant race, you know, <laughs> we can replace that guy. Don't worry about him. It's fine. It's fine." As a good leader says, um, 
Richter learns more about the purifiers, but also learns a big convenient plot bit here that they don't actually have the baby, but some they're in league with someone else who's super dangerous, who will be revealed at the end of this issue, I think. Yeah, she is. That's kind of a spoiler there. Um, so the new X-Men start arguing about yeah. going off the purifiers, and some of them are like, no, nah, we're not going because, you know, it's not worth it, and Cyclops told to stay... And some of them are like, no, we've got to go. They killed our friends. They killed our friends. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we see that Maddox and Layla have made it to the future. And they find yeah. out that all mutants have been moved to these things called mutant relocation camps, which are pretty much concentration yeah. camps, ain't it, at this point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh... Well, yeah, camps, I mean, to a degree, I don't think that they, they, they kind of, they don't actively kill mutants there, no. they, they just put them in, like, essentially the cage and make them, yeah, it's sort of like, what, treat them like dirt, yeah. yeah. What is they, are they called endearment camps, where they just like, what they do with, like, um, illegal Im- immigrants and stuff, they just throw them in one place and it's basically... Yeah, yeah, I so think it's more that's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Concentration yeah. camp. That's a bit too extreme. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's what they call it. But anyway, yeah. And then the new mutants, the new X-Men go after the purifiers. Well, no, like, can it's... I just point out? Just point out, right? Yeah. So they scan Madrox and they like, this guy's a mutant, right? They scan Layla Miller and... and oh, like, that's oh, later on. That's later on. She's not a mutant. Oh, right, right. Come yeah. on, come on. Sorry. That's yeah. next issue. But yeah, that happens. Um, so yeah, the new new X Men go after the purifiers, break into their base because they're super smart. And yeah. the X Men strike team go to find Sinister's base. And new X Men are sort of winning their fight against the purifiers until the ones left behind sort of snitch them up to Cyclops by saying, "Yeah, they've gone after the purifiers." So Cyclops is like. Bloody hell, these dumb kids. <laughs> and their fight, the, the fight against the purifier is going pretty well until Lady Deathstrike enters the arena and yeah. stabs Hellion through the chest and their issue ends there. Issue 5, which is X-Men 205, Maddox mm-hmm. and Layla are trying to figure out a way to get into the in demon camps and yeah. find out why the mutants are blamed for the six minute war which one someone makes some random reference about that later you don't even find yeah. out what that was the new x-men are still finding the purifiers getting their butts handed to them and the x-men strike team <laughs> sorry cat end up at um sinister's base yeah. and they're having a battle which is going pretty well until Something weird happens where all the psychics at the mansion go unconscious. Yeah. 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 It's a bit weird. I don't think it's ever explained why that happens. Yeah. But yeah, we'll get back to later. Um, Richter helps the new mutants, the new X-Men fight in Lady Deathstrike until Richter tells Pixie to teleport them all back to the X-Mansion. But because she's so scared, she messes up the spell. And literally drops all of them between Washington DC and New York. So Iceman has to go out and find yeah. them. But while this is all happening, I don't know if you knew about this whole plot point as well. Um, to keep the mutants safe, the yeah. government decided to have the X Mansion always watched by Sentinels. No, no, but I got that. I got kind of like, I was like, oh, why didn't was watching? Around? But I guess because they kind of not, not they weren't not friendly with them, but they weren't friendly with them. So yeah. I assume they were just there was, but through the dialogue, I was getting okay. There's a reason they're there. Yeah, and they're not there to antagonize. They were just there to, you know, essentially guard the premises from from mutants get coming out and people coming in and stuff like that. Yeah, just like yeah, yeah. We're, we're just wardens here. Like, yeah. Okay, I get, I get it. There was an explanation before, but I don't get the point. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah, because after M Day, like 
most of the surviving mutants tried to get to um, the X Mansion, and there was like yeah. a little war between the government and that. And then yeah. X Men, the government came to an agreement that okay, we're gonna set up a little a help force that Bishop's a part yeah. of, and yeah. the Sentinels will keep an eye out on the mansion. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that happens, and because of Emma losing her control. To help the X Men fight Sinister, that they get their butts handed to them, and then yeah, this is where I didn't know this even when I first read this. Like, this confused me why Gambit was a part of the Marauders. Yeah, yeah, and Wolverine. Now season. let let me um, okay. So like you're saying, yeah, Gambit was a part of the Marauders and not a part of the X Men at this point, right? Yeah. Uh, did you ever read the Gambit solo series? No. All right. So there's a Gambit solo series where he was de- having dealings with uh, Mister Sinister. Yeah. So I think I, I can't remember the exact year it was. Maybe in 2003 something like. That. So I kind of had an idea. Like when I saw him with Mister Sinister, I was like, okay, I suppose he's currently working with Mister Sinister because he has been sometimes as well. So yeah, it didn't bother me. Too. It wasn't a, a massive jump for me to go. All right, he's back and forth, and at yeah. this point, he's he's with the other guys. Yeah, I, I kind of get it because I, you know, like, luckily I was filled in from the the, the Gambit series. Yeah, kind of. Because I kind of remember because I know when he first joined the X Men, well, came to the X Men, he wasn't he was a part of the Marauders, so it kind of yeah. made sense. But then you find out yeah. why he's part of it later on. So yeah, yeah. and then Gambit tells Wolverine, "No, we don't have the baby." So he's like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, <laughs> and also, Lady, Lady Mastermind, literally before this, she was part of the X-Men, which was hilarious as well. Yeah. She is the door of Mastermind. Yeah. yeah. And also the sister of Pixie. Long story. Um, yeah. <laughs> actually, let me just quickly touch upon that because it's so weird. Basically, her father yeah. has an affair with Pixie's mother, who is actually a pixie, an actual pixie, not yeah. a mutant. No, okay. so pixie's right. half pixie, half mutant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I threw it out there. Well, you know what? Yeah, I mean, it's not uh, the, it's not the most oddest pairings out of uh, um, of parents to have a mutant kid. Uh, no. I've heard of. You know, yeah, exactly. I mean, we could get into Nightcrawler. Yeah, as to <laughs> how weird that was. Was. Yeah. Yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. But let me ask, right? Yep. Based on the media, yeah. Don't you when you hit pu- puberty is basically the metaphor for the mutant gene activation, right? Mm, not all mutants. Oh, okay, I was going to say because I was like, how, how do you know this baby is a mutant? Because most of the time, most of the stories, the kids are about 10, 12, yeah, nah. 13, 14, some of that. Yeah, and some they, is they, born. They kind of... All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Like Nightcrawler. There's a few other ones. Um, Maga. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, was born an actual maggot? No, he was born blue and then he grew up. The maggots kind of came out. So, yeah, he was all always... right, all right. Same with, <laughs> same with um, Apocalypse. He was born a mutant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, they're fighting. Um, Wolverine gets nuked in this by Omega Sentinel, who was also literally an X-Men a couple of issues before this. Um, and then... Oh, wait, but he doesn't get nuked, nuked. He just it gets blasted kind of nuked. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it, it drops a nuclear bomb a bit, uh, no, 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 no. again. No, not this. That's later on. That's a couple of years later. <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> not, in this, not in this, story, like, not in this storyline. Not story, in this storyline. Like, when you say later on in continuity. Later, later on in continuity, yeah. Even though it's a retcon thing, but yeah, we'll get into that another time. And then um, <laughs> Nightcrawler tries to teleport Wolverine out, but he gets shot with a hollow point bullet by a mutant called Scout Power Hunter, which they've le- recently changed his name, but I forgot what they changed his name to because it's quite racially insensitive. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, look, I, I would have skewed because cause, um, if you said Scout Hunter to me, I just assumed that like, Predator. Yeah, Scout Hunter. Like, like the, you know, the, the, what's it called? Jaegers now? The actual Predator race from the movies. I have no idea. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll uh, yeah. 
But yeah. that well, look, when I hear the name Scalp Hunter, I just, literally the predators sc- uh, scalp hunt scalps. So yeah. that's why my mind goes. Um, yeah. But the, being, uh, because he's Native American as well, it's like yeah, why? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. You know what? You know, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> why did you name that in the first place? Sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yes, he shoots him with a holotype bullet, bullet, and Wolverine gets, is able to tell. Wait, 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 wait let me, let me ask. Does Scalp yeah. to start off as a, as a bad guy? That's yeah, always a bad guy. good guy. Oh, that's kind of like, well, that, that, is, that explains why they named him that. Yeah. But when sensitive but then it was a different matter yeah and yeah so um wolverine tells emma and cyclops that there was actually an x-men an x-man present at the murder down at copa copper town and they have the baby and then this is when the sentinels attack the x-mansion and then we see the reveal of who has the baby and it's cable dun 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 yeah all right uh let me let me point out at this point at this point in the panels that are drawn, the baby has no hair. Yeah. Because later on, baby has it has hair, right? And more hair, hair. and more hair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, but this storyline looks like it takes place within a, maybe a week, right? A couple of days to a week. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, inconsistency there, but unless that magic a mutant power is to grow hair Could as be. well, or it's yeah. just each right. <laughs> it's, it's, but you know, you I always notice is when like they have events and they have like multi different artists and stuff. This yeah. stuff is always like weird inaccuracies. Like, yeah, wait, in this issue, yeah, no, but sometimes we yeah, sometimes we take the piss, but it, it's minor when the scheme is just when you're reading it with one bunch. You're like, but you didn't, if it's a baby, that didn't have just you can be consistent. You can, I mean, it's a, literally a baby, yeah, you know? just yeah. in the script, baby, or whatever, you know, yeah, it's like one of those things. Like, when they first drew it, the baby should have had hair. You know what I mean? Rather yeah. than not having hair and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> what am I? Who are we? Oh, you know, I can leave, I can give leeway to inconsistencies, like someone's in costume in one issue and not, not costume in another issue, or yeah, change of clip or whatever, right? You, you, different artists can. But something where you draw a baby, you can you know, that be... can be consistent, literally a baby. No, I think that's, that's not as bad as in... The, what you just said with the costume thing, I think that's worse, oh, personally. Okay. All right, okay. I, I know, I different creative, yes, you, you're right in a way that on the script, they were, whoever scripting, you're like, okay, they are wearing this and they can be consistent through the entire thing. But I can give leeway because they're different teams sometimes, they, they and it's coming out all one after another, you can't communicate all the time with everyone that's going on exactly the same time. But we'll just put that down to an editor, kind of. Yeah. Should have just kept it all. Yeah. Let me know. And then <laughs> issue six, Uncanny X Men four nine three. This issue starts with all the like injured X X Men in the plane trying to get back to the mansion, and our boy Nightcrawler's not doing very well. But mm. while this is all going on, they're still fighting the Sentinel Nulls that have gone nutty. And this is where one of my favorite X Men he turns up. Warpath is like, I'm trying to sleep, man, and you lot are just attacking my building. What's up with that? And this is where we learn that all the psychics are just knocked out and Bishop can't get in contact with the one. That's a thing I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And some believe that Cable has something to do with this because, you know, Cable's a loose cannon. He does what he wants when he wants. So they think Cable would go this far to do that, even though Cable's yeah. not that much yeah. of a loose well, well, look, 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 look. But we'll, we'll put it this way, right? From what... Uh, the characters in verse have been hearing about can you people of this that's 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 yeah it's that's, understandable that's we put it right that's yeah. why they kind of accept what they hear yeah instead of just asking a dude but yeah okay yeah, yeah. exactly exactly they're yeah. like you know what even though let's put it this way yeah wolverine is just as uh, you know you legit have seen him do the stuff yeah, that he's, he's probably worse yeah exactly yeah. but you're like <laughs> You know what? You know we don't. I mean, we don't mind working with him apparently, yeah. even though. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Cable just does a few little things. You know that are just quite question. Not super a witch, questionable. By the way, no, no. no but by the way, Cable has, is a Joker who could also. Here's another excuse, right? You could say like the stuff that he 
does that is bad, right? He could yeah. just say, no one me, it'll strife. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, exactly. Unless this is when he was a scroll, but that, that's that's a different that's a different thing. Yes, different thing. So, um, and then we find out that Mystique is also with Mrs. Sinister, but wants nothing to do with his plan anymore because you know Sinister's a douche and Cable has the. Then they learn that Cable has the baby, so Mystique's like, okay, maybe I will stay with Sinister for now, for yeah, my yeah, own yeah. reasons. And she does that yeah. little. Well, he, he, okay. But as you're reading it, she she she's like got. She's speaking to Gambit, and she's like saying, "I don't. I'm not sure how much of a part I want of this, right?" Yeah. But she's backing like, okay, maybe maybe like there's an inference that she has something else going on. That's why she switched back. We should find out later on. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. It's like, yeah, fair enough. Makes sense. Yeah, it's just like, it's not like the characters in being inconsistent. There is actually a reason. That is actually reason. Yeah, it's like oh, she has you don't find out until later. Yeah, and then back to X Men fighting the Sentinels. Cyclops is like, we can't get in touch with the pilots. Dust. I need you to sneak in inside the pilot chair and find out what's going on. So she does, and she finds out that they've been taken over by some nano virus that turned them into some nutty robot sort of thing and while this is all going on as well Iceman comes back with the X-Men that he found and he crashes one of the jets into him and they finally beat the Sentinels and Wolverine talks to Cyclops like hey I think this could be Cable because you know Cable has a nano organic virus thing so this might have something to do with him too. Right, okay, that kind of makes sense. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you look. It sounds stupid, but like it doesn't at the same time. Like, yeah, it's true. Cable could be attached to yeah. this because it is kind of up his mo. So, oh, uh, look, let's put it. And another thing is like it's not okay. Don't want to say it's not a leap of logic, but it is kind of a leap of logic where you like. Oh, so this has the signature of this guy. Uh, oh, oh, that we know of this guy. Therefore, yeah. we should go after this guy because it, yeah. it may be him. That's the logic. Yeah. Right. Uh, a bit wishy washy. It's a bit wishy washy, but I also yeah. tie it up to yeah. like what they're going through. It's like you don't really have time to think things through, do you? Like, no, no, exactly, exactly, yeah. like, exactly. Well, so it's it's one of those where it's like it's acceptable for the circumstances. Yeah. Um, but when you look back at when you take a step back and be like you just you kind of had your conclusion and you you read the evidence that way yeah to suit you which yeah. was right in this instance but kind of you know yeah it's one of these things that i hope for like if it's real world like authors are like why did we think that was that yeah yeah exactly it's like oh, heat of the moment yeah that makes sense yeah so then Cyclops is like, you know what, Wolverine, I need to do something that that wussy, that loser, Professor X would never have done. I need you to assemble X-Force. And that consists of Wolverine, X-23, Warpath, Wolfbane, Calabac, and Hazabo. I can't remember. I I don't know how you say her name. Uh, The white fairy character. Yeah, the white fairy character. Hazabara or something she speaks alien. Yeah, she's funny. And then we get on to issue seven. Weapon. Me, sorry. X Factor. So this issue is more of X Factor, basically. X Force, yeah. sorry. And a bit tying in with the Jamie and later stuff. So um, Cyclops sends out X Force, obviously, but then. Professor X is trying to punk him out, saying, why would you do such a thing? Why would you send them off to your son? He's your son, blah, blah, blah. And once again, yeah. Cyclops is like, dude, who asked for your opinion? <laughs> How many times must I have me smack you down? Exactly. Dude, you're just here because I allow you to be. <laughs> Acknowledge me. So, yeah, so that happens. <laughs> Um, and Cable was stopped by Lady Deathstrike. He's like, oh no, what should I do? 
But meanwhile, we get some more plot development with everyone's favorite hunter, Predator X, who yeah. I feel sorry for the guy in it, who's happened to. Um, there's a guy called Peeper. He calls X back to saying, yeah, I think I'm being followed. Um, can you yeah. help me? And they're like, yeah, sure, we can help you. As he's about to tell him where the, he is, Predator X knocks the, his car out of the road, kills him. And you're like, oh no, that's bad. And yeah. this is what you're talking about with Maddox and Layla ambush some guards so yeah. they can learn where the location of the relocation camps are. And this is the bit we were talking about where she tricked the scanner to believe that she was a mutant, but then she was a mutant. Yeah, so now I was thinking, okay, um, right, so they scan her and she, they say, oh, she's not a mutant, right? And then she basically acts herself and says, I am, so she can go to the encampment with Madrox. Yeah. I'm like, if you just, I don't know, okay, there could have been another way to do it where if she said, no, no, I'm not a mutant, let me join you, or like, you know, it could have been just a way for her to do it kind of more stealthy rather yeah. than just be like, you know what? I am a mutant and they expose herself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then again, that might have the, for the, how, what they needed to tell in the, such a quick manner, that would have been like a bit more of a taking up too much space because they yeah. should have had the stealth in and all this other stuff. So you're like, I guess this move is most quickest and convenient ways to do it is just be like, yeah, I'm a mutant too, even though you, you scan. But then again, how do you know if she's talking crap or not? They just yeah. take her by her word and be like, all right, yeah, all right, yeah. you too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you can't trust your technology, how can you trust a person as well? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And then X Factor go back to Cooper Town and they try and look for some leads about Cable. But Wolverine is doubting Warpath because Warpath has a connection to Cable as. Warpath was a part of the original X Force with Cable, and he's kind of like a father figure to him. So yeah, yeah there's little inner turmoil between team. Yeah. Um, Siren yeah. finds Peeper's dead body, who was what was killed by Predator X, and she's like, I "Wonder what this could be." Hmm. Yeah. They left yeah, your yeah. shoes. Um, <laughs> X Force find clues on where Cable's heading, but while doing so, they trip an alarm and. The police are after them, and Wolverine's like to Wolfbane, keep an eye on Wolfpark because I don't trust him, you know. If it comes down to it, he won't pull the trigger on Cable. And he's like, eh, maybe, you know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. No, no. And then we see Professor X and Cyclops having a brief discussion. Cyclops basically tells Professor, Ross, Professor X again to just bugger off, mate, while you're still here, you know. <laughs> then it pans out, and you see like a broken picture of. Cable with the original X Force, him standing next to um, Warpath. Like, oh, they're really teasing dissension here, ain't they? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a bit obvious about it, yeah. Yeah, and then Lady Deathstrike. We go back to Lady Lady Deathstrike fighting Cable, and this is to come to the end of the issue. We find out that it was a single mute. Or oh, in the future, sorry, we find out that, that in the future it's a single mutant that causes. The war, uh, which is pretty, pretty crappy. And then we move on to issue A, new X-Men 45. Um, this is, it starts with Cable being surrounded by Lady Deathstrike and the Purifiers until the X-Force turn up. Wait, 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 let me just point out, by the way, he's not doing too bad for himself. Uh, with, like, he's got to take care of a baby and yeah. he's got to fight a whole bunch of lethal combatants, let's put it that way, because yeah? yeah. they don't. They, they'll murder him if they... Yeah. And they... Um, before the X-Men come in and help him, obviously. Yeah. And then we go back to the future where Layla and Maddox are taken to a reloca relocation camp, which is pretty sad. Then yeah. X-Force and Lady Deathstrike people go to war. Lady Deathstrike wants to fight Wolverine, but he doesn't have time for his, like... I ain't got time. For yeah, this. he know he, he basically gives her the whatever hand gesture. Yeah, he doesn't really. Yeah, but it's more like yeah, uh, you know what, uh, woman. Yeah, I ain't got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, X twenty three. X twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. Like take, yeah, to get the hot tag. X twenty three. I ain't got the time for this woman. Yeah. So that's fight's about to kick off, but then we switch yeah. back to seeing Predator X getting more closer, closer to New York. 
Yeah. Um, the see the mansion where everyone's still recovering from the sentinel attack and Beast is trying to care for all the injured mutants. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as their only healer, Elixir, is out of action because a wall fell on him, so he's out of action. Yeah. Convenient. And Surge feels really bad because she was one who thought of going to fight the purifiers. But Emma Frost is like, nah. You probably saved their life because if they was here, they probably got killed by the Sentinel. So you're like, okay. Yeah. Guess that's slightly yeah, better. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. X Factor arrive to help with the current situation. And Cyclops like, thank you. We need all hands on deck right now. You know, yeah. we need to go and help X Force. So off panel, they go and get on the plane. Then Lady Stref Strike thinks she's got the upper hand on X23. So X23 is like, you talk too much. She goes, oh, why don't you... Sorry, Deathstrike's like, you don't talk. She goes, I don't talk, but I listen. So she stabs yeah. her in her, but some bionic part, which basically starts shutting down her body. And then X-23 just beats the crap out of her and leaves her for dead. Uh, let, let, let me also point out another thing as well. Like we were saying about Wolverine feeling pain, right? Yeah. So X-23 kind of just stopped fighting. Because mm. Deathstrike, like Deathstrike's like, oh, you're not fighting back. See how you're, you're inferior to me and all that yeah. stuff, right? Or the standard uh, heel uh, talk, right? The heel yeah. talk. And yeah, NX23 is like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, like you're saying, I don't, I don't need to fire back. I just need to listen. And then she used the claw on her foot to stab that, that area on Lady Death yeah. I'm like, ah, okay. Fair enough. But however long Lady Death was beating you, you must have been in pain, right? Um, <laughs> If I remember correctly... X twenty three is being conditioned not to feel pain as much. Oh, as I know, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, conditioned to ig- try and ignore the pain, or literally does not feel pain. No, she. The first one we said she conditioned okay. because of how she was brought up in the in the right, right. city. But I mean, you still feel pain, so it's just a bit logical, illogical as well. Um, like, yeah. Yeah. I get what they're going, and I get how they need to do it. She's not just a brute fire; she's gonna be gonna smart fire. But yeah. you're gonna stand there and just take a beating. Yeah, not even dodge. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's what Rocky did in one of the films. In no, uh, Rocky Three. Rocky Three, where he just took all the beatings to get that one opening. That's what she did. Yeah. So, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. There you go. And then. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, let me just point out in that Rocky Three way. Apollo trained him to, to dodge and weave, and then Rocky decided to ignore the advice in his final fight and just be like, "Yeah, I'm just going to take all these punches." Yeah, man. all right, thank it. Uh, <laughs> we, there's a weird bit that I need to research myself, where you see um, Wolfbane fighting one of the purifiers, and he mentions Reverend Greg. I can't remember yeah. if Reverend Greg's her dad. That's why she goes a bit nutty and ends up killing him. But I think it's her dad, and he's like a super mutant hater as well. So yeah. I think. I to research on that. Um, Warpath tries to reason with Cable. It's like, Cable, let's talk. Don't have to run. But while he's doing all this, one of the purifiers shoot him. And Calabat's yeah. like, no! And jumps in the way and takes like four bullets to the chest and dies. Yeah. Um, Wolverine's a bit insensitive in this part. He goes, hey, don't worry about your friend. He's dead. Cable's more important <laughs> to focus on. Like, <laughs> Dude, that's no, up. no. I want to point out. I want to point out Wolverine's persona. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, you could have him say that at this point because kind of, his personality is like um, as harsh as it is. Yeah. I think I would. It, uh, if it came out of someone else's mouth, like Emma Frost, for example, I think, oh man, you, you're a bitch, right? Yeah. Or Cyclops, you know, just a, yeah. But Wolverine, kind of, I accept it more because he's he's a bit. Of a uh, um, graph himself, he's like, look, look, we've got a thing to do. Let's just worry about this later. Let's just go and do our yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but it's still like kind of. It's like that is still. It hard. is hard, like, though. Dude, man. Yeah. But yeah, I get what you mean. Then you gotta, you gotta, like, okay, so the film persona is not the comic, not exactly the comic persona. Um, no. When you, when you know, so. When when I say I ex- I kind of expect not necessarily expect this of him, but from his comfort person, I'm like, yeah, you know what? it's 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 acceptable. Yeah, it's acceptable. <laughs> right? yeah. It makes it's sense. Like, older. <laughs> yeah, but he's only, at that moment, there's two X Men 
I would expect that from. Yeah. With being Wolverine and Cyclops, like you yeah. got bigger things to worry about. You know, your friend's dead. Not much we can do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 so he dies, and Cat- and Wolfpack's like, nah, I throws a sword in the guy's head, which is awesome. Well, it's not a sword. He's he's vibranium at knife into his head, which is pretty awesome. Um, X twenty three kills Lady Deathstrike, and says a very cool line. Says you was dead the moment you touched Jillian Keller. I was like, ooh, that's gangster. Which uh, which is Hellion. Who who's that character? Like what? I mean, like there's clearly some sort of storyline that happened before, right? Oh yeah, you no know, kid. You know she stabs someone when Lady Deathstrike first comes into the. To the comic, into the series. Oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, who she stabbed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Because yeah. 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 I thought for some reason I was like, is there, is there, is there something that happened prior to all of this that kind of? But I just kind of, like, I was like, and maybe it was like, okay, maybe I, I miss uh, like when reading it a bunch. Sometimes you mix up your information, but I thought, oh, okay, maybe they have beef with something previous as well. No, I get coming from. from it, it, if she called it, him it, by it, his, yeah, his code name Hellion, then you would understood, but. Yeah, she couldn't buy his real name, so yeah. like, oh, that's a bit odd. So, yeah, yeah. um, um especially since if you don't mention it, if it's not, I know on the, the beginning of these comics, they have the, the recap pages, so that's yeah. where you get your information, bro. Yeah, if you're yeah. Just, like reading the yeah, you have the explanations, you're like, oh, okay, maybe, yeah, yeah. It's a bit, mm. and then Wolverine chases down Cable, and it's like, why does this guy keep circling? and he realizes, oh. He's trying to steal my jet. So he <laughs> Cable steals the X-Jet, nearly runs over Wolverine. And Wolverine is like, when's Cable, what's Cable's game and how many people are going to die for him to, like, you know, win his game? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Then issue nine, which is... Uh, in can, can I just say the irony of Wolverine talking about oh, how many people are going to die when he's killed, like, like so many? <laughs> yeah. Probably millions that week, so you know, yeah. It's a bit... <laughs> so yeah, um, issue nine is in X Men two hundred six. We have a lot more about the mutant relocation camps. Well, you, you see how they're treated because you see um, Maddox and Layla get their head shaved and get their mutant tattoo on their face, and you're like, oh, that's pretty mean. Yeah, the mutant end tattoo. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's pretty harsh how they get it done. Yeah. Um, then Cyclops and the X Men meet X Force after the battle with Lady Deathstrike, and Wolverine's like updating Cyclops on the situation. And Cyclops is like, "Okay, cool, but we need to take care of our dead. Get Calabat's body. We're gonna give him a proper burial when we get yeah. back to the mansion." So it shows that Wolver- that Cyclops is still a human because he's not like, eh, he's dead. Let's carry on." He's like, "No, we need to." Celebrate our dead, yeah. all that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. they give they give him a bit of a, honestly, humanization. But they're like, oh, he's not cold and hearted. Oh, all the st- like in the storyline when I've been saying how 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 him and Xavier are speaking and how Cyclops is speaking. So, you know, he's not just a machine. Yeah, how he, Xavier wants everyone to think he is. Yeah. Yeah. And then back at the X Mansion, the Stepford Kooks have, and Prodigy have fixed the. Fix the Rebro, sorry, and they're trying to pinpoint where Cable is, and they find out that he is on his way to Texas. We see Cable steal a truck, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> then we go back to the future with all their tattoos and stuff, and yeah. see that it's really, really bad. Warpath is super pissed, and M can feel it because she's an. Her, Part of her path, powers is being an empath. You can feel it like, dude, you need to chill because I can feel it and it's not good for me. And the Warpath's like, I don't care, yo. I'm going to kill a crap ton of people for the day's done. Like, oh, wow. He's not taking this death pretty well. Then <laughs> Iceman is questioning Cyclops if he's willing to kill K before it comes down to it. And Cyclops basically says, I will if it's for the good of the mutant race. He's like, okay. That's a leader right there. And then <laughs> you get Prodigy with the kooks and they find, like I said, find Cable heading to the compound. So Cyclops and the team head to Forge's compound. Cable arrives. He's like, Forge, I'm not here to kill you. I need to talk to you. I need your help. But he's like, something's a bit strange. Normally, you know, one of Forge's holograms or something would have greeted me by now. What's going on? Or oh, necessarily, 
greet him, but there'd be something here. Yeah, because no security, no, no, you know, yeah, nothing going on. He's like, this is a bit weird. So he finds Forge beating up. He's like, hey, what the hell's going on? Did he get shot in the back? He's like, oh, that's a bit. Hmm, what's going on here? And then yeah. it f- switches back to the future, where Maddox is just thrown into the the yard by the guards and said, yeah, fend for yourself. Then other mutants help him, and they're like, yeah, you need to look after yourself, you know. We all got to do this together. And it's weird because they kind of like close up on their faces, and you see the so you see the M tattoos a bit more. And then yeah. the next panel, you see Bishop, and it's kind of focused on his M tattoo, yeah. pointing a gun at the baby, like. So after all these years, right? After yeah. all these years since the first introduction of Bishop, now you know where the end has to come from. That it's on his face. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. It's a bit weird, but okay, cool. Yeah. Even I think they I don't know if they mentioned the origin of the M tattoo before, but uh. now, but now it's like a, a more of a confirmation visually thing. Yeah. yeah. And then... like it, yeah. it's an actual in continuity whatnot now. Yeah. It's like, ooh, he was a child of the camp. And then yeah. we want to issue 10, Uncanny X, Uncanny X Ben 494. Issue opens up with Kate, not Cable, sorry, Bishop pointing a gun at a baby, a crime baby. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh Bishop. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I don't, first of all, Bishop, because at this point, he just appears, right? Yeah. So it's like, What's your agenda? Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, like, yeah. are you going to kill the baby? You're going to take it for yourself? You know what is going on exactly? Yeah. So this like... is intriguing. I uh, will say that. Um, and then he's trying to talk himself into like sh- pulling a trigger, and yeah. then Gambit, Sunfire, and Omega Sentinel, and Vertigo show up, and they kick the crap out of Cable of, of Bishop, <laughs> and they take the baby, and then. Gambit's like, huh, I'm glad, Bishop, you finally shown your true colours, your scum. Because if we all remember, Bishop, when he first came, and it's the same in the car in the comics, that he came to warn the X-Men that there's a traitor in their mix, and it was Gambit, but it wasn't really Gambit, it was Mystique pretend to be Gambit. So... Oh, well, uh, okay. Now that's a bit, uh, so... Yeah, there's an X traitor. There was the X traitor, right? Yeah. Which like uh, is Gambit, but then it's so there was a message that Cable got uh, that Bishop got from a few, uh, and the, who we thought was the X traitor. Turns out as well that message was about onslaught. What was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you're referencing the car, the anime series, I think, right? And, when and you say uh, in the comic as well. All right, because there is, I think there was a message, right? And I'm not sure if this had anything to get with Gambit at the very beginning, mm-hmm. but Jean Grey sent them. Uh, there, there was a message that they that K, K, uh, Bishop um, when it was in the future. It's talking about the X Treaty right now. Jean Grey uh, reading a message. Uh, I don't know if he just attributed to, 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 to them talking about Gambit when it was, but. During the onslaught saga, when when onslaught was dying, they actually replicated the exact message, except okay. that with the you know the well, the sections that were cut out, they yeah. filled in, yeah, um, with the, the text whatever. So they then tweak it to onslaught. Uh, yeah. Professor X is the traitor, um, rather than oh uh, you know the assumption of Gambit. Yeah, whoever okay. might have the prior to it. Um, oh, okay. In yeah. effect, they kind of. Brand them both concurrently, but in a retcon style. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <For a minute. laughs> yeah, so um, then we go back to the future after Gambit and that take the baby. We go back to the future and Maddox is running. Maddox is wandering around the relocation camp looking for Layla, but everyone's blanking him. And then mm-hmm. Layla shows up and says, "Hey, I need to meet someone. You need to meet Lucas Bishop." And this is where he grew up. You're like, oh. Lucas Bishop, that's Bishop. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Could, what yeah. could this mean? Um, so go back to the past. Bishop wakes up and he finds out the X Men are on their way. He's like, "Oh crap! Uh, uh, I, ca- I got enough time to leave." And then the yeah. X Men comes like, "Oh yeah, Cable attacked me and, and he attacked Forge and he took the baby. I don't know what's going on. This is all madness." So they all buy into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I will point out, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> Even though he's blatantly lying, right? Yeah. 
that, that Emma Frost in Bubba reading is mine. Yeah. But I will say this: why they got no reason for? They got like okay, if you're gonna point out that inconsistency, let's put it this way, yeah. She got no. She, they can go by the way because they've worked with him before. Yeah, she's got she's no, no reason, reason to doubt him. him. And he was knocked out as well by the evidence that they're seeing. They're like, you know what? I I uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's and we're all touched, so yeah. So you kind of buy it, like, okay, cool. All yeah, right. sure. We have no I reason mean, to doubt Why would you need to read the mind of someone who there is basically just telling them, oh, I, need to, I want to help you, this yeah. is what's happening, it's kind of running into their idea of what's happening anyways. Yeah, so there's no point. And then, so, Cyclops is like, okay, cool, we need to assemble every standing member of the X-Men to find Cable and stop him, no matter the cost. <laughs> but then... Yeah. Warpath's like to has a blah blah blah. <laughs> I don't want you to go because you know I don't want someone else I like to die. And then Wolverine literally comes in and goes, "You don't have a say in this. You're coming to the other girl." And so Warpath's like, "Oh, cool, masculinity oh, is gone." I, yeah, I just got bitched out, but yeah, whatever. Literally. Okay, cool. All right, whatever. I like to fight, so I'll come along. So yeah, like I said, Cyclops, and then Cyclops again reaffirms that yeah. We got to stop Bishop, no matter what it takes, and then we see Bishop. Uh, and the... Cable, we got to stop. Cable. Sorry, Cable. Sorry, yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, then Cable. We see Cable on the outskirts of Dallas, and he's like, "I have no one to turn to except for one person." Then he contacts Professor Xavier. You're like, "Oh, so what does this mean?" And then by, issue eleven. By boom, right? Yeah. Hmm. Then issue eleven in X Factor twenty seven. Later and. Maddox find young Bishop and like, hey, we need to talk to you, but he keeps running away. So they finally catch up with him. Wait, wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Let me point out as yeah. well, because you didn't mention how old, like Bishop's like a uh, what ten year old boy here or something like that. Yeah, around that. He's he's super young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can understand when you say, oh, he's constantly running away. He's like, yeah, eight to ten years old. They ain't specify exactly, but yeah. Of course, you got to run away from strangers that are like being, being a bit weird. Yeah. And then he goes to him, we can't talk out loud in the public, you know, the guards will see us, you know, they don't like us mutants mingling as it is. So, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, cool, makes sense. And then we kind of get a bit more of Bishop's backstory and explains what led to what's going on in the future. And, like, he's wants the baby dead. <laughs> he goes, if I go back in time and kill the mutant messiah, I would. So then... Later comes to conclusions like, oh, this is what's happening. So yeah. she grabs a bomb, a grenade off one of the guards and throws it at Maddox and says, yeah, dude, um, bye. He's like, but wait. So he dies or his future clone dies. Yeah. Gets thrown back into the past. Now, yeah. I've got to say, I, I, it makes a lot of logical sense, right? Get yeah. him back. Right, yeah. but did you have to put a grenade that blow everyone up in the vicinity yeah. as well? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, to be fair, it might have been just like a you know those a, 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 like a small uh, area of like, effect that grenade, but yeah. still, it's just like that's a bit overkill. You yeah, it's just... like, dude, you know that's a bit mean. Yeah, yeah. So back at um the compound, Cyclops is like something doesn't make sense, but I don't know what coming to like within. In regards to like Bishop and that, he's like, something doesn't make too much sense. Then the kooks find the um, gambit for using Cerebo because his emotions are just crying out for help. They're like, okay, we know where Gambit's going. All the mortars and that are going to Mere Island. So Cyclops sends the X-Men, oh sorry, X-Force and Bishop to Mere Island. And then we go back to the medical bay and Siren... Bishop, I mean not Bishop, Banshee's daughter is praying over over Madrix saying, oh, God, give us a win, you know, we're losing here. And then all of a sudden, Maddox wakes up and she screams and Strong Guy's like, dude, turn the decibels down, you're hurting my ear. And then <laughs> Maddox gets up and he holds his face and then he hands goes away and the M's being imprinted on his face. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That explains yeah. a lot. And wait, wait, but that, that, hey. So this is a bit weird as well because it's like, it wait, is. so you're telling me all is alternate itself or whatever these clones, they bring back their damage? 
I don't. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, like, okay, conveniently, we need that empath happening on his face, so we're just going to do it this instant. I think but usually it does never happen. You know what I mean? It's a bit... I think because normally, because of the strain of getting thrown to the future, I think he became... The one in the future that he sent became Maddox Prime, if that makes any weird sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, maybe. Prime. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is, whether they, how they... They don't explain it. I just expect you to ex- accept it because yeah. of uh, I don't want to say plot for me, but just like but it's, this is what happened. All right, it's moving on. Yeah. So yeah, that happens, and he wakes up saying, "Where's Bishop?" And you're like, "Ooh, interesting." Then we see Bishop and Professor X in one of Bishop. Sorry, Cable and Professor X in one of Bishop's old ships, and Professor X is patching them up, and they're talking about what's going on. Yeah. And... Uh, and and that's a, there's quite a good use of Xavier's powers here because um he's he's fixing up cable because he's all the cables will be up yeah. but Xavier's put him in a projection and yeah. shut off his pains as well yeah just so he, like in reality he's sewing them up or fixing them or whatever they're gonna do right yeah. uh an iodine or whatever yeah he to take care of his yeah but in the mind people sitting in his spaceship with Greg Malik and whatever he was. And Xavier's just chatting, he's like, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. but Xavier had to explain to him, oh, yeah, because Cable realized something's wrong in his mindscape. And Xavier's like, I put you here purposely because, you know, you, 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 it's going to hurt. All this yeah. stuff I'm doing to you is, 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 is hurting you. Yeah. Um, and because of who you are, Cable. Yeah. yeah, he's like, because of who you are, Cable. Basically, saying, because of who you are, Cable, pretty sure anesthesia, anesthetics and stuff doesn't work on you because yeah. you know, okay. you're a tank. So yeah, so yeah, 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 you're part man, part machine. I don't yeah. know how much this techno like, virus is gonna, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. And this is what was quite funny, and we brought up earlier when Cable was like, "I don't understand why none of you, you and the X Men, don't trust me." Fraser was like, "Um, <laughs> you apparently died not long ago, and now you're here. You haven't said anything, so." Not only that, we don't know if you, you, or you, or you are Strife. Yeah. You know, so kind of. I mean, I suppose at this point we know that you're not Strife because Strife doesn't have metal parts in his body. But before then, you know. Yeah, uh, not, and um, like I said, like you, you f- guess you faked your death and now you're back and you come and tell your dad or us. So you, you know, your track record's not very clean right now. So you know, kind of yeah. to trust you. But it's uh, the funny thing is, Cable that called out Xavier on the exact same stuff. He'd yeah. Like, yeah, but Xavier. But Xavier. <laughs> Come on now. Exactly. <laughs> and then, so, um, we go back to the X Mansion, and Maddox is like, no, nah, me and X Factor, we're leaving, we're leaving. And Cyclops is like, dude, why? He goes, because you screwed up. And Cyclops is like, tell me why I screwed up. And he can't, so Emma just puts him to sleep. And. We go back to Cable and Professor, and Cable convinces Professor to trust him. She's like, okay, cool, I'll trust you. Let's yeah. go to Mirror Island, where everyone I know dies. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gambit and the Marauders arrive back at Mirror Island with the baby, and then we find out Mystique was actually pretending to be Mr. Sinister to get the baby yeah. for her reasons. We'll find out yeah, yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. though, I've got to ask, though, I've got to ask, yeah. how long has Mystique been, uh, been Mr. Sin at this point? Is it just because the last recent couple of issues, or was there a whole storyline? Oh, just to this, because the next issue, you see what happens three hours yeah, earlier. Yeah, no, 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 I'm just like, maybe, maybe the, maybe she's been sinister for a while now, I'm pretending nah. not. No, nah, just for this part of the comic, she's payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, back at the X Mansion. Oh, sorry, um, Cyclops and that are at, at Forge's place. Yeah. Now at the X Mansion, we see the young X Men like, oh, we need to help build, rebuild, and pay respect to the dead. Rockslide's moaning that you know they're not being part of the action. It's annoying. And then dun dun dun, Predator X shows up and he's like, maybe I don't want to be part of the action no more. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which I thought was yeah. quite funny. Because Rock Slide, his character's hilarious. He always goes on that, like, he's the bee's knees and the toughest of the tough. And then when things like this happens, like, maybe I'm not the greatest of all. So, yeah, he's a good character. And then X-Force and Bishop arrive at Muir Island. And Wolverine's like, guys, we've got to stay alert because, you know, 
some of these mutants, some of the marauders have powers to alter your mental state. For example, and just turns around and stabs Lady M Mastermind, and then the issue ends there with the fight starting. Yeah. Then we're up to the penultimate issue, issue 12, New X Men 46. This is answers the question you asked just a minute ago. So it starts with three hours early, uh, where Mystique and Sinister are talking about Rogue. And um, Sinister's like, yeah, Rogue's going to die. Sorry about that. Uh, I tried my best. If I had more time, maybe. But eh, say goodbye to, to Rogue. So Mystique doesn't oh, yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Now I remember, because here's the thing, right? Yeah. I was like, has she, have I, when, you, when, you, when we were first talking about um, mm -hmm. Mystique and Sinister, I was like, wait a minute. Did I ever see Mystique and Sinister at the same panel? Same yeah. place? So I was like, oh, maybe he did it way before when. But like you say, he only was like three hours early in this comic. Yeah. Uh, in this storyline. But that could have been from the beginning of the storyline. You know what I mean? This, this yeah, whole thing yeah. could have taken place in three hours' time because of how quick it kind of went. But I think there was a couple of nighttime stuff that it couldn't have. Um, yeah. So then... Um... Yeah, so Mystique is like telling them. Um, so, yeah, Mystique believes that the baby can bring Rogue back to life, but she hasn't said how it could happen. So you're like, okay, that's a bit questionable. Um, the fight between the X Men and Marauders is pretty awesome. It's just blood everywhere, basically. Um, yeah. Wolverine was about to do something, and then Scout Hunter shoots him in the eye. Yeah. And it's quite graphic. You're like, ooh, wow, that's a bit. Yeah, but uh, okay, here's the thing, right? She's Wolverine in the, in the eye. You're like, yeah, okay. You would conveniently shoot Wolverine in the eye. The guy's going to heal back. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... Oh, oh, I mean, it would have been the only other person that would have been able to get shot in the eye was X-23 because they can heal from it. Yeah. You know? And then, um, yeah, that happens. And Wolfbane's fighting Alkaline until Sunfire burns her and takes her. Then she gets taken away by some guy who's like a ripper for the cannonball. I can't actually remember who this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. And then some dude with power dampening powers is about to kill Wolverine. Because like, he's like, yeah, you can feel that bullet in your head, right? Imagine what it feels like when you ain't got no healing powers. And then... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Until X-23 comes along, cuts the dude's arms off and like guts him. And then she goes to Wolverine, you heal too slow. And he's like, yeah, you always tell me this. I get it, I'm old. Stop, leave me alone. And then... Scab Hunter tries to hunt, sorry, tries to sniper, what's her name? Her blah, 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 blah. But Wolfpaw's like, nah, dog, not again. And throws his knife into his shoulder. He's like, oh, great, that hurts. And then Mystique comes out and says, hey, Scab Hunter, I need you to buy us some more time. He's like, oh, I don't think that's going to happen. Look, the X-Men just like kicking the crap out of us. <laughs> then Mystique runs off back to Gambit and, to and then she uses... She explains her plan to Gambit about saving Rogue. And Gambit's like, no. Rogue wouldn't want you to do that, you know. This goes against everything that Rogue is. You sacrificing someone else's life to save her. Yeah. And they have a go. Get into bits. Uh, by so. the way, by the way, can I just ask as well? Because you're yeah. going to have to clear this up. Me. Uh, Rogue on that slab, right? And they don't they explain how she, whatever, like, what. So she has like, some cataconic uh, condition. But then yeah. they kind of expect us to know already what's happened. They don't explain it. They yeah. don't give like a verbal. They don't seem to say, "Oh, since the incident was whatever, just something to give us why Rogue is in an incapacitated state." They're just like, "Yeah, she is." Ooh. Yeah. If I sort of know because before this, and this sort of links to when Cable saying about when they said the Cable died, it links towards that. Yeah. Because um, before this. In X Men, not Uncanny X Men, X Men. Yeah. Um, Cable had a team of Rogue, Cannonball, Iceman, Mystique, Lady Mastermind, Sabretooth, yeah. and Omega Sentinel. Yeah. And something, ha someone they were fighting. I think it was like, they were called the Supernovas or something like this. I'm like super mutants from an alternate future, if I remember correctly. Yeah. They made a virus to kill off certain mutants, and that's the 88 virus that Rogue has, which put her in this current catatonic state. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, but I it's mean, not explained. Yeah, you could have just said, oh, since she was put in this state by the virus. And... Yeah. 
And then you know the little asterisks they usually do say see issue whatever. Yeah. They kind of just done something like that. Yeah. Because no one has read this. Yeah. Yeah, when I first read this, on the slab. I didn't <laughs> like, know what? about any of that. And it wasn't until like, years later when I bought this graphic novel called X-Men Supernovas, where it's in there. I was like, oh, that explains yeah. that then. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit... Mm, that you have to sort of figure it out yourself. So yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, then we go back to the X-Mansion where the kids are fighting off Predator X. And they're like, this is super hard. Why are we doing this? Um... Then we go back to Muriel Island where Wolfbane's about to be killed until Professor X and Cable show up. Professor X puts the cannibal rip off to sleep and Cable's like, did you kill him? He's like, no, I just put him to sleep. And then Cable's like, but you wish you did later on kill him. He's like, oh, that's a bit. Okay, cool, Cable. Um, then we see Mystique putting the baby next to Rogue's face so Rogue can absorb the baby's power. But Gambit gets super pissed off. I was like, you can't do that. Why are you doing this? Mystique yeah, is yeah, wrong. Yeah. We're going to want this. And then Professor X enters and says, give me the baby. So they give him the baby. And then we go back to the mansion where the kids are still trying to fight off Predator X. And it's only going for like the weak kids or the injured ones. So it makes its way down to the medical bay where Beast and them are. Nightcrawler wakes up. He's like... I can't teleport all of us out of here. What are we going to do? And then the Pixie's like, oh, I remember X-23. She can beat one of these things. And she teleports them all to Muir Island. And then Cyclops is like, uh-oh, what do we do? And then Bishop shows his hands, but then Predator X turns up. Yeah, now we're in the f- season finale, shall we say? Yeah. Issue yeah. 13, X-Men 207. Um, this issue is just basically lots of fighting and storytelling, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it starts with Cable trying to get away from Bishop. Well, sorry, from Predator X and Bishop. Predator X bites off Bishop's arm. And Cable escapes. It's like, ha ha. And he goes to the baby. That's what I call get the hell out of here. He's moved. Yeah. I don't know what that even means. Um, and the Cyclops tells Emma that hey Emma can you tell all the X-Men to stop fighting the Marauders and she's like why he goes because you know the Marauders have trained for years to fight us but never they never fought the kids so tell the kids to fight the Marauders so she telepathically <laughs> tells them to do that which makes sense yeah, yeah, they're yeah, unpredictable yeah, yeah. and their powers probably nunified their powers whatever it is and then tell all the X-Men to fight Predator X so the X-Men all go to fight Predator X and new kids fight them and then the Marauders, Cyclops finally meets up with Cable and they have a talk. Yeah. Yeah. And while this is all going on, Rogue wakes, Rogue wakes up and then Gambit sort of tells her what happened and she's like, Mystique, why would you do such a thing? Why would you put baby's life at risk? Then we go back to the X-Men still having a hard time trying to fight Predator X because, yeah. you know, everyone's just getting taken for mugs by him. Um, the new mutant, sorry, the new X-Men beat the Marauders. <clears throat> Pixie has a moment to shine because um, Omega Sentinel's trying to make fun of her saying, huh, what have you got to kill me? And she goes, well, my soul dagger stabs her. She dies. And then Exodus, who's like one of the... I, his powers are just too insane for me to even explain what they are because I don't actually know what they are myself. But he's having a mental fight with um, Emma Frost, monologuing and whatnot. And then she's like, while you're doing all this, my friend Dusk is... Getting into your body and um, <clears throat> they beat him. And then Professor X convinces Cable to give the baby to Cyclops to hold. So Cyclops can sort of figure out that this baby is special. Yeah. And meanwhile, we go back to Rogue with Mystique. So like, Mystique, I don't want you around me anymore. And then she basically puts Mystique into a coma. And then Gamma's like, hey, did you kill her? He's like, no, nah, just put her in a coma. My powers yeah. have changed now. I can, I know when I can, and I know how to do enough just to put someone in a coma rather than like killing them. So it's like, yeah. okay, cool. Then we go back to Wolverine fighting Predator X, and he's like, nothing's working on the outside. Maybe if I get inside it, it will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Let, him, let cool. him eat me yeah. and swallow me, 
and I'll just, uh, you know, but he, okay, he, so if I can't pierce the skin from the outside with my adamantium claws, right? Yeah. And so lay on the inside, how am I just cut out? Because he's obviously, the guy's inside isn't as strong as he's outside, isn't it? That's why he can cut out. I don't know. <laughs> Here we are, yeah. Whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it's so. is. I get what you mean. Wet, so I don't know. Okay. Like the organs and stuff, yeah, I get that. You can cut the organs, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it'd be better if he kind of just not mouth. got spat out after, but like you're saying, he's just, you're like the uh, Predator X just slumps over, then Wolverine kind of like, or oh, 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 spits Wolverine out after, then he, as he's spitting his own guts out. You know, yeah, yeah okay, fine, fair enough. Um, but let me just point out as well, um, Predator X is not a small entity, you know, uh, thing. Because no. if he's big enough to swallow Wolverine, I mean, you know, he's quite big. He's, yeah. he's, um, it's like the, the yeah. What would you say? Is this? Well, Wolverine is five foot three, right? Roughly yeah. in the comics. Yeah. So, what well, were you going to say? Predator X is like, what, 10 foot? Something like that? I think it might be about that. Because it quite, looked quite big when it was like. Because they said every time it, eh, it got bigger and bigger, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it's a it's kind of like one of those crouching kind of style creatures as well. Yeah. So it, it it it's not standing up right. No. Um, but who knows? Yeah, so yeah. it beats that. Um, then Cyclops holds the baby. He's like, "This is just a baby." Then the baby reaches for his pendant that he has of him and Jean, and then he has all the yeah. flashbacks of like when he had to give up Cable, when yeah. Jean died and all this stuff, and when his dad died, he's like. <gasps> This baby is yeah. special. Yeah. And, yeah. And then we go back to Rogue again saying that the baby has helped her because over the years Rogue was slowly going crazy because every time she absorbs someone she gets a bit of their memories and it builds a persona in her brain and it gives her like yeah. annoyances. But since the baby kissed her, that sounded weird. Since the baby touched her, <laughs> yeah. all those things have gone so she could think clearly again. And then she also basically breaks up again, but like, you're a part of this, so I don't want nothing to do with you, and leaves. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. And then. But I did it all for you! I, yeah. did, I did it so you could live! Like, well, oh, you did some terrible things to do that gambit, that's not cool. <laughs> and then go back to Cyclops holding the baby and kiss the baby and say to the cable, take the baby, let the baby have a life. If you need any help getting off the island, let us know. And then Wolverine's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. The yeah. baby needs to live. And then Cable's about to time... Cable's time jump in. And then Bishop's like, no. Picks up a gun. Shoots. But obviously Cable's not there no more because he's time jumped. And his, ramp, his rogue bullet hits Xavier. And then Cyclops is like, you son of a... And then does Omega Optic Blast. Yeah. Bishop goes flying. And yeah. Fred's Rex is dead, apparently. Yeah. 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 And Cyclops is like, well, without Professor X and his dream, there is no X Men. So it ends with ends on that note. And then you get like an epilogue page where you see Cable has arrived in the future. And he yeah. says, arriving here is the easy part. The hard part is yet to come. And it's right. there. Yeah. So let's point out, right? Like, all this kind of. Like, that Xavier and and uh, Scott are kind of having their their beef. Yeah. Uh, I say so I don't know how much they went to make us feel for Professor Xavier dying. Yeah. So just, that's the point here, right? Because if he's been okay, so it, it, without this current storyline, he's been a kind of quite a calm style character, right? But the yeah. way that Cyclops treats them like this. There is something, right? Yeah. But then, how is this to feel bad for Cyclops feeling bad for Xavier dying if Cyclops has always been an ass to Xavier through for, for these couple of issues? You know. Yeah, well, you could be an ass to someone, but then you are like Professor Xavier is a father figure to him, so he's obviously is going to be sad when he dies. Yeah, I mean, like, like, yeah, that's something they, they should have had a couple of a, a couple of uh, interactions with Cyclops and Xavier where it's like, yeah, I know I'd be harsh to you, Charles, but like, you know, kind of like a bit more. Layered interaction, you know. No, nah, like I get if. Well, do you like... think? Uh, do you think? Uh, uh, you think? Uh, are you gonna? Say, this is the turning point of when he like realizes. Oh, you know, after Xavier's gone, um, I, I have treated him harshly. Uh, That's one of those things. You... Like, okay. like in, even in real life, for example, like say someone's like in your family done you wrong like a week ago, and yeah, you're yeah. still holding that resentment. You're gonna hold that resentment, yeah. and then if it 
and they say he just suddenly die. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, that is quite sad. You're not gonna yeah. be have the moments when, for example, like I can see why Cyclops has been pissed with him for this long because, yeah, most of Cyclops's adult life he was lied to by Xavier. Yeah. So he's gonna act the way he was towards him all the until this point. You know what I mean? Well, it's, yeah. To be fair, he does point out Xavier. This is what you trained me for my whole life since yeah. I was six, since I was a teenager. So. Yeah. Like, oh, you know what, Charles, you weep what you sow kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I have to say about the storyline, it's like, it's first of all, <clears throat> it's quite action-packed, um, yeah. but it's definitely a part one, Yeah. how it reads, because it's like, okay, we got the strings here, Yeah. but what is the child, you know? Yeah. What can it do? What is the capabilities or what is it meant to future-wise? It does some vague stuff, right? Yeah. That, it, that you're like, all right, they're gonna, they, you know, this is like not the prequel, but this is like, uh, if it, this is the first season of a series, this is yeah, yeah. that because we know we've got more movies or series, or whatever. It's like, okay, yeah. this is, yeah, the way I was reading it is like, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a continuation, whether it's gonna be a single part of a continuation or more, or whatever. Yeah. Um, realistically speaking, though, patient wise, it was 13 issues. Do you really think they could have, um, Sean did. pushed it? Go, yeah, yeah. I mean, it could have been six issues, probably, or mm. how many issues were they? Were they like okay? So there were it was running across four different titles, yeah. Yeah. So it could have had like eight issues then, probably. I would have said ten. You probably got ten out of that. But no, 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 no. And then, okay. The thing is with that is like they because they've got to run it across four different titles. They're going to try and run it across four different titles equally. So if you yeah. say if it's ten and you had uh, Masai Complex one shot, which counts as part one, then yeah. you ran it through those. Eight issues, like those series, the eight issues in between, and they had the Masai Complex uh, part, you know, finale part two or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Masai Complex Omega, if they want to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Then you could add the 10 issue series. Um, yeah, I don't think you need to go 13 particularly because they kind of moved it uh, kind of quicker. I don't know, because then there's lots of things they would have to cut out and then you'd be like, Wait, that makes no sense. How do we get to this point? Oh, I suppose they could have cut out some of the action points ish. Yeah, but then it's just then it's been one of those old X Men comments where it's just all the talking, like I don't really care. Uh, it's true, it's true. That it's it's okay. What's the strange thing is it's kind of screwy then, but not at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, as in, in, there's lots of things happening, right? Yeah, lots. Of uh, and there's lots of and stories happening as well, but yeah. it's just kind of it's like I don't know. You, um, you they, there's some instances where I'm like, you probably could compress this. Uh, you know when you do the full page panels for um, story beats, yeah. You know something a revelation. Or Maybe you could have just compressed more panels and had to, yeah, um, a bit more things here and there because then sometimes you know the reveals. You know, like the full page where uh, Wolverine's bursting out of um, Predator X and stuff like that. And like, yeah, I don't know. Um, Maybe that could have been short and just stuff like that. But then there's it's like specific issue bits, I guess. You can't, you know, it's single, 22 pages, right? In, uh, issues or the 20 pages at this point. I think it might have been 20. I don't remember. Yeah. So you, you could probably shorten specific bits within the comic, but then, uh, you know, then the comics, that comic issue still has to fill 22 pages. So kind of, yeah, I suppose you're, you're, you're kind of right in the way it has to be what it has to be. Yeah. The, the comic book, the actual issue won't come out. Like, like uh, me personally. I the page for it. I prefer when events are longer rather than like an event being six issues because then they cram way too much stuff and then like certain things will happen just because of plot convenience. Like, oh, wait, what? Yeah. You know what I mean, um, I tell you what, I tell you what, we'll do. Uh, we'll just get into. I'll. Uh, uh, we'll do some uh, um, shorter stories hmm. and some six, and then we can do a compar- not, not say comparison. Not long form storytelling versus. I don't want to say concise storytelling, but we're like, oh, this 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 set of six issues, and, that's the, and then this set, you know, versus how you, you, a storyline that's like thirteen issues or fourteen issues. Was, you know how like we don't want to go to X Men uh, Age of Apocalypse because that was like what, how, how many issues, man? That's nuts. Stupid amount, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Spider Man Clone Saga, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that kind of stuff that I don't like. But like, you know what I mean. Between my sweet spot for like events is yeah. between like say eight 
and 13 issues. Anything past that, it gets a bit like you're saying just... Uh, uh, the usual, though, the usual seems to be six parts. Yeah. Because they, they write for the trade paperback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, though I have to think, um, there's some time... Uh, Spider and the other, for example, that 12 issues, like, we it just it not even need to go to 12 issues. Uh, those Spider-Man... Um, Spider Kid and then Spider Verse kind of Spider Verse was what twelve issues? I think it's ten. Yeah, between ten and twelve. It's like oh yeah, that 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 I kind of like yeah. I mean that kind of needed the room to tell the stories. I was yeah. like so that's fair enough. But Spider Kid was a more compressed version of that because yeah. I only ran like five, so it's fair enough. Because like for example, like if it was a. Uh solo spider-man story and it was 12 issues to me that wouldn't make no sense Mm. but if you got something like x-men where it involves all the other sort of x-men characters who have their books then i can see it it works to be fair yes i'm gonna i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say x-men is a team book yeah uh, and there's multiple characters and multiple teams and i mean mean, but when when we're talking in the context of the x series you know what i mean yeah that that the everything that falls under yeah yeah um because they got a lot of characters fair enough and then you want to make them kind of some characters more relevant than others unfortunately but hey you know what i mean yeah yeah Sadly. Uh, some, some people some some characters might not have anything to do with the, the actual sto- like personal connection to the actual story yeah um this is more an extra story uh because it actually every single team that's involved in here has a part to play. Yeah, they're all affected by it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's not like, obviously, for example, the movies are the Wolverine show. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I like, say Wolverine had an event in his own comic, yeah. his own comic, yeah. and it was like 12 issues. I'd be like, that's pointless. Why? You, you don't need that yeah. much for one dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it works with okay. Batman, though, because Batman is Batman, but, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but that's Batman's got the Bat team as yeah, well. Exactly, so, so. And, yeah, and, yeah. and he's got, and usually when he's in big events, he's, like, he's got, road, his Rose Gallery are involved. Yeah. And more than one of them to a degree, so he, yeah, he so can sort of fill works. in his shoes with like, him as he's going through whatever he's going through. Yeah. But, yeah, cool. So, overall, um... Has it made you in- this event made you interested in the X Men and their universe? Uh, it's intrigued me enough to. Okay, here's the thing, right? It is mm. basically a tease. It is a tease. It's yeah, like, it is. It's ooh, we year. got this storyline. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's um, it's like it's 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 right next to me, uh, uh rubbing its leg, uh, long legs are going. Ooh, what's up with this baby? And I'm like. Oh, well, yes, I've got to see a little bit more because I've already started looking. Yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave the shadiest example. Yeah, you have, but, <laughs> but it makes sense. What I mean is, but what I'm saying is, this is definitely a part one of something, and it's intrigued me to see now that Cable's got the baby. Yeah. And I've got the, uh, yeah, I've got the basics of what's going on. How, what, how does it end up? Even though I kind of know at this point, it ends up at Avengers versus X Men, but it's yeah. the way there. Um, yeah. Because in Avengers versus X Men, Charles is back. Yeah. And he also dies again. Yeah. So like, right, let's see how this point he comes back to the point where they get to I mean, stuff has got to get extreme to the point where the X-Men are finally Avengers. So it's like all this stuff in the middle is like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's like, see what's going like, on. We all know I have a personal bias towards the X-Men, but yeah. the run-up to um, X- A versus X... It's yeah. very, very intriguing. Like, lots of weird and great stuff happen. Like, I think yeah. not long after this, this is where they move to San Francisco and stuff gets crazy there as well. Uh, they even fight yeah. Dracula. So, hey. Uh, okay, you know what? <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. We might do, like, a couple of one-shots uh, or something. Maybe small issues in between. Yeah. Get to the point where... To, yeah. But... The, because I, I don't want to don't want to spam a whole bunch of X Men. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, at once. So we'll just do maybe some other things before we get back to the next part of this uh, yeah, X Men. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any other any other stuff you want to sign up for? Um, no, um, not really. Um, but if you know, like I said to you before, if, if anything you want to know about X Men between that period and now, I probably yeah. could tell you. 
Exactly, exactly. That's why it's like, oh, you know, maybe I've got questions as I'm reading it that you can answer, but which you kind of do fill me in as I'm, yeah. I'm asking you. Yeah, cool, really cool. All right. Um, what do you guys think of this storyline? Like, is there any other stuff? Do you think it's new reader friendly, or do you say you would you say it's continuity heavy? Uh, could it been shorter? Could it been longer even? Yeah. You know? Um, is there anyone you more... thought should have died yeah. and stayed dead? Like, or well, maybe even a character that wasn't in this that could have actually not necessarily progressed the story, but make it more intriguing. Yeah, as well. Yes, let us know. Let us know. Yeah, and yeah. So we hope you all enjoyed us lis- listening, talking about my love, the X Men, and as the back of the book says, um, what does it say again? Easily the best X-Men crossover in over a decade, said by IGN in 2007. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is probably the case at the time. Comments weren't that great in that time period. So yeah. Um, yeah, um, thank you all for listening. Um, let us know, like, see what I said. Um, and I have been the guy who knows stuff, Kyle Charles, and the guy who what? No stuff. That's Layla's catchphrase. She knows stuff. All oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. And I am the uh, the man from the future who's who's the son of two present characters, but got infected with ten organic virus to fight an evil being in an alternate timeline. See why, Chung? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. You know what it is? Okay, what? you know what it is? What? It's just wacky when you say when you loud. say things out of context. It yeah. just sounds so weird. Yeah. Oh, um, one thing before we go. Um it's just, it's not a spoiler, but remember I yeah. said that the Jamie and Layla thing gets weird? Yeah. Well basically she comes back as an adult. Right. And then they start seeing each other for a bit. Wait, how old is she here? About thirteen. All right, because I was like, maybe she's a teen, maybe she's like seventeen or something like that as well. No, eighteen she's... could be because uh, you know the, the way. Okay, some people draw things. Yeah, they draw Jason Todd. Yeah, uh, in the Batman's, and you're like, okay, so this boy is meant to be eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Is he? Uh, you know, sometimes we draw like. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say art stuff. Yeah, some sometimes you're like you're not a hundred percent sure. Did it ages sometimes? Yeah, uh, they just you know you just pause within a certain range. You're like yeah, could be this, could be younger. But I never thought she was thirteen because I yeah, was like cute kid. Yeah, so it's a bit creepy later uh-huh. on. So yeah, right. um, yeah, that was the creepy thing. More weird things happen with him anyway. So yeah, and <laughs> um, let us know what you think. Follow us on the socials and everything, and see you guys later. Bye. Bye.